So now that we've gone over sort of the rates of ligand substitution reaction, talking about the stability, uh, we're going to talk about the little the different mechanisms that can occur. And uh, this just gives you sort of a flavor, I hope, of you know, the mechanistic type of chemistry that can go on when we're talking about uh, D metal complexes. So again, we're doing this um, ligand substitution type of reaction where we have an incoming ligand Y that's displacing a leaving ligand that we're calling X. And um, there are three main ways that this can occur. The three main me mechanisms called disassociative mechanism, associative mechanism, and interchange mechanism. And these are given the symbols uh, D, A, and I. I for short and respectively. Uh, the rate determining steps or the RDS, uh, the rate determining step for each of these mechanisms can vary. Okay. So we're going to start with the disassociative mechanism, the D mechanism. And then the D mechanism, what happens is first you're going to uh, have the leaving group leave. So the X ligand is going to leave, coordination uh, number is going to go down by one, every complex, and then the Y ligand is going to react and give your substituted complex. Um, and so sometimes, depending upon the specifics of the reaction, which we'll get into uh, a bit later, you can actually uh, isolate this lower coordination geometry uh, complex. And if you see that, hey, this has a lower coordination number, uh, that's very good proof that you have a disassociative mechanism, right? If you can detect it spectroscopically, or maybe you can even cool the solution down or something like that and isolate it, right? Um, this is a reaction uh, diagram, energy diagram uh, of this, the potential energy of this reaction as it occurs over time. So you can see that, uh, at least this is a representative uh, uh, reaction coordinate, or you can see um, here is your complex that you started with. Here's your incoming uh, ligand X, and then you're gonna go up in energy um, you're going to make that intermediate, right, that has uh, this MLN intermediate that has uh, a lower coordination number. And then there's going to be another bit of, of energy to transition state energy to get to the final product. So you have an intermediate and you have two reaction barriers here. Um, so that's the sort of standard type of plot for this sort of mechanism. Associative mechanism. Um, it's kind of what, what it sounds like. First, instead of giving away a ligand, you're going to gain the ligand. So the coordination geometry is going to increase by one. And sometimes you can detect this intermediate with an increase by one of the coordination number. And if you can't, that's great proof that you have an associated mechanism. Okay. And then this higher coordination uh, associated complex, that X is going to go away and give you your final product. And so the reaction coordinate looks very similar, where you have that associated intermediate now but you have two reaction barriers, right, to, to interchange between the two, uh, uh, the intermediate and the final product. The interchange mechanism is the third mechanism, uh, and this is very similar to the associative mechanism, um, but it doesn't have a true intermediate. And so the, we write, write this, this kind of transition complex, uh, tr sorry, transition state complex having these dashed bonds. So you're not making true bonds here, instead, you are um, just having, uh, as the, the incoming ligands coming near, the, the leaving group is moving away. And those kind of happen in concert. So it's a, it's a concerted type of mechanism. We call this the interchange mechanism, I. Um, and because it has no true intermediate, uh, you're never going to have any hope of isolating this thing or detecting it, um, in the classical sense at least. And your reaction coordinate is going to look something like this. Or, yeah, there are some changes going on at the top here, but there's not a big dip like there was when there was a stable intermediate for the associative and disassociative mechanisms. All right, so then within these mechanisms, you can have um, different types of rate determining steps. Okay, and so um, when you have mechanisms in which association is the rate determining step, the RDS. Those are called associatively activated mechanisms. And you'll see what this means in a second. I mean, it's really clear when you see the reaction coordinate diagrams. But um, so again, these are the three types of mechanisms we just went over to summarize. And so if you are in a dissociative mechanism that is associatively activated, okay, 
the rate, rate determined step is going to be this last uh, step because this is where the association occurs. If you're in an associative mechanism that's associatively activated, then the rate determined step is going to be the first step because that's where the association occurs. That's where you have the coordination number going up, coordination going, number going up, coordination number going up. And in the interchange mechanism, if you have an associatively activated interchange mechanism, the first um, step is going to be the RDS because that's where the coordination number goes up. So we give these um, three associatively activated mechanisms their own uh, little uh, nomenclatures, DA, AA, and IA. So there's associative activated associative mechanism, associative activated interchange mechanism, associative activated disassociative mechanism. All right. So um, the reaction rates depend upon the nature of the incoming ligand for all, any associative, uh, associatively activated mechanism. It doesn't mean, matter if it's AA, DA, or IA. Um, and this makes sense because the rate determining step, right, what determines the rate of the reaction um, is the uh, uh, incoming ligand, is the associated ligand. So remember, think about the rate determining step as like a bunch of funnel in uh, a, a bunch of sand in a funnel, right? The rate that the sand can fall through this funnel, it doesn't depend upon how much sand you have. It depends upon the rate determining step. What's the rate determining step? It's the, the width of the funnel, right? So it doesn't matter what happens before the rate determining step or anything like that. Um, or, or, or after, after the rate determining step, um, the rate determining step is what is, at least in simple cases, determining the rate of the reaction. Okay. So um, here, rate determining step in these associatively active me mechanisms is association. So association depends. Uh, therefore, it makes sense, right, that these reactions, these associatively active me mechanisms, would uh, their rates would depend upon the uh, nature of the incoming ligand. So you can see this iodide ligand, um, when you're dealing with the iodide ligand with the same complex, it occurs about 10 times faster than when the bromide ligand is there. That is good evidence that you have good experimental evidence that you have a reaction that is going by an associatively activated mechanism. Which one? Is it IA, uh, DA, or A? You'd have to do more experiments to figure that out. Uh, so most reactions with square pl planar complexes are associatively activated. And, and this sort of makes sense because square planar complexes are relatively low coordination numbers. So it's not too bad to just add in a fifth coordination. There's steric room for it, right? Um, let's see. So here is just a, a, a further example. So let's say you have this um, platinum complex, okay? And now you can look at different incoming ligands. Now we're calling them nucleophiles. Yeah, that's effectively what they are, um, right? They, they are attacking the uh, metal center. And you can look at the log of the relative rate. So there's logarithm scale. So it's telling you that if you have the ligand being chloride, um, that's 10 to the third, uh, 1,000 times about stronger, uh, faster rate than with methanol. And if you go through here, and see, you know, uh, uh, some trends. And what are the trends here? Uh, it turns out the soft, you can see, see some trends. The trends are that the softer bases react faster to form complexes. And this makes sense because um, P2 two plus is a relatively soft acid. So going back to our hard acid, um, uh, hard soft acid base theory that we talked about previously, we know that soft goes with soft, that's gonna have a more stable complex. So if you can form something that has a more stable complex, that's going to drive the reaction um, further. That's going to drive the reaction to go faster, especially when you have, or in particular, when you have an associatively activated mechanism. Because, hey, that incoming ligand is going to have a strong attraction to platinum 2 plus. So it's going to be able to make that uh, uh, associative activated complex. And, and then the reaction can proceed from, from there. All right. So let's look. Uh, let's let's stop right there, um, and, and and we'll continue forward in the next.